Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage, where it's still winter time for some reason in April, and we had an earthquake today. Awesome. That's not stopping me. Can't stop me. Can't stop, won't stop. Today's video, we're going to figure out how to get the proper like push rods for your engine, because I did not. So back in September, I ordered all my engine stuff, and... It was recommended to me to get, I believe the size was 7.425 inch push rods. And when I was putting it together, trying to tighten it up, I noticed there was a lot of valve lash. Well, not valve lash, but you know, the rocker arm had about 30 thousandths of play in it off of the valve, which is valve lash. Now, if you want to grenade an engine that is not supposed to have valve lash, that's how you do it. So what I need to do is figure out what size I need. I could just do one cylinder and take a gamble that they are all the same or measure each one, which I'm going to do because trust issues. <laughs> so come to my little board here. I got intake exhaust, intake exhaust, you get it. It's all the cylinder numbers and we're gonna figure it out. And our goal is to get somewhere between 25 thousandths and 45 thousandths of preload added to the numbers that I put there. Now our target preload for these Johnson lifters is 35 thousandths. But we have a plus minus 10 thousandths. So we have about a 20 thousandths of play. So I got this little uh, measuring rod doohickey. Now this isn't the best one because it has no marks on it. I think the comp cams one has like little lines on it. If you do a full rotation, that's like, it's like 50 thousandths of an inch or something like that. So this one doesn't have that. So, so yeah, I have one of these digital calipers. When I measured the new push rods that I got, which are 7.425 in length, I measured it on this and it was about yeah, one to two thousandths off. So either this thing's off or these are slightly too big. Either way, these are too short and they will not work. So I have to take all these out and remove them and use this little doohickey and measure each one because I don't know what happened with the head. I don't know if maybe the surface here, that's back here, where this little plate sits on for the rocker arms, that could be a little too far out. The head might not be decked to like a stock height. I, I don't know. So I gotta figure that out. If it is a manufacturing error where it's slightly lower here and slightly higher here, I need to order individual push rods. Now I'm hoping it's all the same. I'm going through every cylinder. It's going to suck, but it's got to be done. So let me get all these rockers off and then I'm going to play with this and see what we could do. And hopefully we have a solution to the problem. All right, guys. So I got all the rockers out except for this one because I just want to keep this tray in place. So when I go down the line. This thing's not flopping in the breeze. So I'm leaving all these push rods in because I'm gonna do all the exhaust since I have the intakes all taped up and the exhausts are open so I could see when the valve is closed and I'll see when the intake lifter pushes up. So I'll know that this is on the round side of the cam and not on the lobe side. So right now, cylinder one, this thing's up so we have to spin it and get it in place. And I kind of have a rough estimate of where the push rod length needs to be. I'm looking at about, I'm looking at about 7.500 adjusting for the, and that's with the preload on the lifter. So I'm going to deduct 35 thousandths from that about, and I'm going to see what it looks like. So you have my digital caliper over there. I'm going to set it up for that length. So you're looking at 7.465-ish. Generally, these only come in 25 thousandths, but that puts us in our window. So if we're at 65 and we get a 75, you know, no big deal, or 75 or 65 to a 55, we have that range, but 75 would probably be where we want to be. But I'm going to set that up and I'll show you what I'm talking about and we'll get this whole process going. All right, guys, I got my, uh, my digital caliper ready to go. So we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna zero it. 
So right there we're at 7426. That's roughly the length of our old push rod. So if we stick this in here, just perfect. So that's our new one that we got, but it doesn't work. So we need to go a little bit longer. So I said we're gonna go to about 7465, I believe. So we're at 66 right there. Okay, so right now we're at 7465. So I'm gonna open this thing up, hopefully get it close enough to get in there. See how much. So right about there. So right now we're at 7465. We're gonna stick this in the engine and see if we could get zero valve lash when this thing's just snug down when the valve is all the way down or the valve's all the way up and the lifter and the cam are on the the round side of the camshaft and we'll see if this will work for us now also be careful with this because when you put it in and out this thing's pretty sensitive it may spin on you so just be delicate when you put it in pull it out so you have the right measurement okay so we're going to drop this in Nice and easy. Find our center point right there. Now we're just going to put the rocker in and just snug it so it just gets down. Now when you should do that, you should have zero lift or lash on the rocker arm on top of the valve. It should be able to freely slide side to side, but no up and down. So we're going to have to play with that and tweak it, but we're going to figure it out. Okay, so we got our rocker here. Just gonna st stick this in, get it set on there, and we are going to slide it in and screw it in. So, we got side to side there, and we got no up and down. Now just make sure that the push rod is not pushing in the lifter. So let's back this out a little bit, see, if, see what we got. So about right there, we got a lot of play there. Got a lot of play there. So then we'll snug it down. So I did push it down. So I gotta push it down just a little bit. So now I gotta take it out. Cause you don't want any tension on the push rod. Cause then you will get a wrong measurement on your lash or not your lash. You'll get a wrong re uh, measurement on your preload. So it's a freaking annoying game you gotta play, but you gotta play the game. Be careful pulling this out. We're gonna just Turn it slightly in a little bit, see what that gets us. Now I'm assuming that little turn got us about maybe 15 thousandths, maybe a little less. Let's keep playing with it. Unfortunately, this is a long process, but it's gotta be done. Maybe that might be it. Got some side to side, no up and down, and it's pretty loose in there. So I think we have a winner there. So I think we got one settled, but let me get, I got to pull it out and I got to measure it with the, the digital caliper. And then we'll jot that down on our board over there and we'll keep going down the line. All right guys, I put it on the caliper. As you can see, we got a 7.453. It's been about 5453, it's bouncing back and forth. But that's the measurement we got there. So I'm gonna jot that number down I'm actually gonna go to 5.4 because that's where it was. It was sitting at like 5.4 and a half. So, I mean, wiggle this thing a little bit, you're gonna get different readings. We'll call it 5.4. So I'm gonna jot that down on the board. So I got our 7.454 there. Let's double check that we got that right, 4.54. So that's that cylinder, we're gonna to move to number two. Well, number three, cylinder three, but the second one that we're gonna do. Same thing, we're going to do the exhaust because we could see that. And I'll show you something real quick that you got to pay attention to because the lifter trays are little bastards and they snag on to the lifter. All right, guys, I spun the engine. And so this valve is, well, this cam position is actually in the closed position for the exhaust on cylinder number three. But this thing doesn't look like it moved. So when you're doing this, because of the lifter trays, be careful. So you give it a push, and it pushes it down. Now, we know the intake is in the up position, as you could possibly tell. Probably this angle is better. But you can see this guy's up, this guy's down. 
this is in the position we want it. So like I said, doing all the exhaust on this side and then we'll do all the intake. This way I can close this all up, close the intake ports up so no garbage gets in there. So we're gonna keep going and we'll see if the previous measurement works on this one. So hopefully it does and I can just order one size and be done with it. But until then, gotta measure and go through. All right guys, just to the second one. Uh, when I started doing it, it was pushing down the littlest bit so I gave it like barely a quarter turn in. And now it sits perfect. We got side to side movement, but no up and down. There's no preload put on the lifter. Let's take this out and measure it and see what we got. It should be a very slight difference from the previous one. So, you now are these things gonna be absolutely perfect? No, but hopefully they're not all off and there's not a drastic difference between here and here. Like if it drops five thousandths of an inch from here to here and it roughly stays around there for the, the rest of them, like cool. But if it goes, you know, from what this was to minus five thousandths to minus five thousandths to minus five thousandths and then you have a total of about fifteen thousandths difference that may call for a different length push rod for this side but we're going to go through the rest of them and i'll keep you updated all right guys got the measuring stick out let me get a little make sure that this thing's perfect right there on this one, we got 7.446. It was actually at 7 before. I kind of just messed with it. So I jotted it down at 4.7. But as you could tell, there is about a 7 thousandths difference between here and here. So hopefully that trend does not continue. Because 7 thousandths is, it equals a lot when you get down to here. That's like, that's almost 25 thousandths if it continues on to this side. So may have to play with the push rods and order them individually if this trend keeps going. But as of now, if we just add, let's say 25 thousandths to this, that still doesn't put us in, it'll put us in a good territory because that'll put us at 7.479. So that leaves us in this range, but we don't want that. We want it closer to here. Well, at least I do, but anything in here is acceptable so if you had 25 thousandths to that that's what you get that's what you're going to get but being that these are only even numbers so that'll put us at 75 it may come into question a little bit but we're going to keep going we're going to play with this all right guys this is cylinder number five exhaust this just happened to be the same length as number three so I'm happy about that, but I'm still just gonna double check on the measurement, make sure that I didn't spin the little testing tool. And then I'm gonna jot down the board and we will keep going. All right guys, I ended up getting the same number on the exhaust here, here, and here. So just for haha's being that this one came up a little different, I kept it at that same length as these other three and got side to side movement, but no up and down. I could have had a little a little tension on the lifter before, but I, I'm happy with that. So I guess we could just call all the exhaust all the way down, you know, the same length. So I'm gonna jot that down on the board. Okay, so that's good. And just to show you the issue we had the other day with this, let's see if you get in there. So as as I was stating before, you want you want side to side movement. You do not want up and down. That is valve lash. So if you want to grenade this thing and go, you know, ah, oh, it's good enough. I don't feel like ordering another part because ultimately these push rods are about 125 to 150 bucks for the whole set. So you could be saying, hey, I don't want to spend that money again. I'm just going to go with it. Well, you know how a grenade works. That's going to happen in here. We don't want to up and down movement. We want side to side and that's it. But what, end up, what ends up happening anyway is you want to have preload on there. So you don't even have preload. So just picture the cylinders of the engine slapping the top of the, or the bottom of the head. That's ultimately what's going to happen to the lifters. And you do not want to do that. You will not have an engine that lasts long or if it even lasts at all. You will have obnoxious sounds going on in there. So I got this side done. I'm going to tape up the exhaust ports and open up the intake ports. 
You know, I don't really have to. I got the push rods in here, but I'll probably end up leaving these in just so I could see the movement. And I'll probably throw the rest of them in so I could see when this valve opens, I'll know that this is closed. And I'm going to go down the line and do the same thing again. Alrighty, we got this entire side done. There wasn't much discrepancy between each cylinder. So as you can see here, basically the biggest one was basically these here. They were about four thousandths off. You know, that could be a little speck of dirt in there. That could be very microscopic. I'm going to go do the passenger side of the engine and get that all done. And I'll get back to you after that. And then we'll do some equations and figure out where we stand with what we get on these. All right, guys, I got all my numbers and it seems like the lowest number was a 7447 and the highest number was a 7.455. So we're going to do some figuring out, do some measurements and uh, do some maths and try and get into that range. Now that's kind of difficult because like for example this number if you had 25 thousandths to that you're looking at about 72 so it would be 7472 which is not that it's actually like 23 or 22 and if you go one higher than that go another 25 then that puts you closer to that number. So you could possibly do that. Now, when you get to this number, that's when it gets tricky because you add 25 to that, you're at 76, which they only make 75. And then if you go up 25 more, which makes it 50. Yeah, so you would be at 7.501, which would put you past that 45. I don't know how critical it is, but we're ultimately looking for that. So we got to do some uh, searching online, but the only other thing I could think of is to make up that distance difference is like I said, if you're, if you're at this number and you add 25 to that, so basically you're going up 28. So you'd be at 7.475 with this push rod, which puts you in range of that. But I wonder if there's a way to get one of these trays or these little lifter holders, these little brackets, and get them a little taller just so you could fit a, a taller push rod in there. So I gotta do some research into that, see if they make that. Even if this was up like five or ten thousandths, that would make a world of difference, especially if you go with only 25 thousandths longer than this, because this is, so yeah, as you can see there. That was a 7.425. So I think if you even went with a 7.450, this is still, it, it's not enough for the preload. You would actually, it would probably be as snug as it is with the little tool adjusting it, but you still need that preload. So I don't know. I got to do some figuring out and I'll get back to you when I figure out what I'm going to do. All right guys, a couple days in the future from when this video was initially recorded, it's giving you an update. So I decided to order individual push rods and I ordered them in a 7.475 length and a 7.500 length and try it out that way because instead of spending the ridiculous amount of money it is to get custom push rods or messing with shims underneath the, uh, the little rocker tray, I decided, eh, let me see what happens. So this one is the seven 0.475 length. Now I got no play on that right now. I don't know what position the engine's in, but when I had it with zero lash, side to side movement, and torqued it down, and I'll explain the torquing sequence that I used for this in a second, but this seemed to work really well. So as far as the torquing sequence goes, when this has zero lash on it and side to side movement, and you still have some ways to go down on the rocker to the pedestal that's here, this guy. What I like to do is do the torque method where you start at the top and you turn this and torque it into a position that you want. Now, if you start here, spin around and get to here at about the nine o'clock position from the 12, spin around to the nine o'clock position. 
That's about 50,000's preload. I was looking to get from roughly here to somewhere around here where 25,000's would be. Now when I torqued it down to 25 foot-pounds, I got to about here. So that puts me kind of in a happy spot. You know, 45 is probably about here, and 25 thousandths is about here-ish. And I got to about here, so that puts me like right in the middle, so I'm happy with that. So, what I'm gonna end up doing is just getting the 7.475 length push rods and run with that. So, I ran through this entire side of the motor with this one push rod that is that length. And everything turned up happy. It's just that this was the last one I did, so I just left it in. These are just here, ignore them. And I'm gonna order those up and, you know, start getting that done so I could make my head and push rod video and rocker arm video that was supposed to come out probably like two weeks ago now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna order that stuff, get that put in, I'll get that video out. And in the meantime, since I can't do anything else to the motor pretty much, Going to start working on the brake master cylinder, the intake manifold, and the line lock, and all that fun stuff. Maybe a battery relocation kit, because I definitely need to look into that more. So yeah, those are probably going to be coming out before this push rod video comes out. And also another reason for doing that is while this is on the engine stand, it's easier to torque these down. There's no twisting of the motor, like if I had it hanging. Because if I do the clutch, like I get the bell housing and the... The clutch put on the back here and that'll just get in the way of putting it on the engine stand so i can't have it hanging while i torque it but once this is done i can hang the engine i can put the bell housing on the engine the clutch the flywheel all that stuff and i can start measuring for the new clutch system that i got the new master and sleeve cylinder but until then i'm gonna work on some other things and you know that's my update from this point you know we'll just keep trucking along uh mother nature's being mother nature there's tree come everywhere pollen and it's pouring rain it's windy i got washed out of work today i got work this weekend so i can't do anything then and then i have to work the rest of the week so hopefully i get some time off and i could actually bang some of this stuff out hopefully during the week but anywho, thanks for watching. I'm at 55 subscribers now. You guys are awesome. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, all that fun stuff. So I'll see you in the next one.